What is up, everybody? I am your host, Rob Younce, and thank you so much for tuning back into the Canecast Show. If today's your first episode, you are in for a treat. If you've been with us before, we appreciate you coming back. Either way, today's guest is a dude pitched in the World Series and would most likely get you out on three straight pitches. But before we get to him, I'd like to ask a favor of you. We need your help in growing the show. How can you do that? Well, first, you can give us a like. Smash the like button. Whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast host, give us a like. Do it now. Two, you can drop us a comment and let us know what you like or you don't like about the show. But either way, give us a comment. Three, help us grow our community by subscribing. This lets others know that this is a real show. We've got some real heat coming for you, so you really want to help us get the word out. Four, you could show us some love with a review. Five, share the show. Send it to your friends and enemies who are missing baseball right now. Now's a good time to bridge that gap. So send this show to everyone. Today's guest is a Canes alum who has lived out every kid's dream. He went to college and was a star there. He is East Carolina's career leader in almost every single pitching category. He pitched in the World Series with the St. Louis Cardinals. He shored up their bullpen on that run and was an integral part of that. While he didn't light up the radar gun, he's been a winner at every single stop in his baseball journey. Our guest is none other than Seth Manus. So you better dig into the box because he's coming right at you. Rob Younts again with Kane Cast Show. Um, got an awesome guest on today. Really super excited. Um, he was our first Kane that made it to the MLB. Pitched in the uh, pitched in the World Series. Has had an awesome career. Um, Seth Maine, it's awesome to have you with us, man. Um, welcome to the show. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to you know see what y'all guys got running with this. Yeah, so you know we're trying to we're trying to make sure we get as much good information out. You know, you like everybody else and. Uh, sitting at home right now, probably just itching to, to do something different. So we figured, um, you know, this was the, the plan in the fall and the winter was to, to get some information out um, to our players, be able to help promote our players, um, you know, make sure that um, we can give them good advice too. And can't think of any, anybody better than you. You know, you've gone through, you know, youth ball, high school, travel, all that good stuff mm -hmm. and, and landed where everybody wants to be in the big leagues. Yeah. So, um, you know, want to pick your brain on some things. Um, so, you know, really, really looking forward to that. We also got Jeff Petty here again. You know, Jeff's our, our CEO and founder of the Canes. Um, Jeff, always great to have you. How are you holding up through all this? Doing the best I can. We got Seth <laughs> no. on here, so I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I know, right? We got a dude today, man. Um, you know, Seth, tell us a little bit about your journey. I know you're you're from North Carolina, but fill everybody in a little bit on, uh, on how you came up and, and where you are today. So I was born and raised in Pinehurst, North Carolina, went to Pinecrest High School. There I started playing travel ball, um, I think freshman, sophomore years. Um, my dad was coaching the team, just a local little team, a bunch of local guys. And then we ended up playing Coach Petty's team a couple times. And, I mean, they had an awesome team. We would meet up and, um, you know, ended up joining them, I believe, my senior year. And that's when I really got a taste of the Canes. And then I went to East Carolina, played there four years, and then, Cardinals from 11 till 16, Royals 17, 8 to release in 18, and then played independent ball the beginning of last year, and then finish up with the Rangers in AAA. Very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. You, you, I know you gave us all some of the high points and just kind of, well, just kind of glossed over everything. But, right, you know, right. let's talk a little bit about, let's go back a little bit further. So, you know, coming up in high school and, and, you know, the recruiting process for you is a little different than it is for a lot of guys nowadays. Tell us, you know, kind of how your process went, you know, went through and, and you know, your time with the Canes and how you got to, uh, to ECU. Well, definitely, I mean, that exposure was a little tougher to get now. The showcases were just kind of coming on the scene. And, um, you know, the showcases are awesome, bringing all the college coaches in to see them, which in reality – Mainly when I was coming up, the co coaches had to come to your high school, you know, see you. That was kind of more the route. And I mean, if you weren't playing travel ball, it was a bit tougher exposure. And so ended up um, – didn't really have many looks. And then I got on – I believe I got on with the Canes and had a couple of decent tournaments with them. And 
it's really when I got on the map, I feel was looking at coastal Carolina and then eat, played a tournament down to East Carolina. I'll never forget this one. I was, my grandparents would take me to the game. Um, it was like two and a half hour trip. And of course we get, we got lost on every trip going to a tournament. So, <laughs> I mean, I believe it's like 10, 15 minutes for the game. I'm pretty sure I called coach Pediak and I was like, Hey, we are close. I'm coming, ran right to the bullpen, warmed up, and then I think that game was against Pitt Community College. I remember and it well. In, and then, yes, went well and um, ended up talking to East Carolina after that a little bit. So that was your senior year or junior year? I believe that was my senior year of high school. Wow. The fall yeah. of his senior year. Yeah, he so, pitched six innings that night against Pitt. I think only allowed, I think he only allowed one run over six innings. Maybe didn't even allow a run. Pitched really yeah. well. And then we played at Wake Forest yes, the next weekend, and Billy Godwin, the head coach, followed us up there. But, of course, Seth spent some time with Billy after the outing that Friday night. Did, did you spend time with him that night, or was it the next day? Or I think it was right after that outing, him and Coach Jarrett. I uh, talked to them in the, um, in the clubhouse a little bit, and just, you know, briefly. And then, yeah, that next weekend through against – that was actually Whit Merrifield's team. Yeah. That, uh, South Charlotte, South, Panthers, Charlotte Panthers. South Charlotte Panthers. Yeah, you all ended up being teammates in the big leagues. Right, right. Yeah. So, again, full circle. Yeah, you pitched four innings that day, and the only hit that you gave up in four innings was a Whit Merrifield bunt. I remember yeah. stuff, dude. I do. Yeah, I, mean, I got a good sharp, memory. Sharp. Yeah, I got a good memory. I don't have a lot of. I don't have a lot of good going on, but my memory's sharp. <laughs> but yeah, and then finally. Billy was like, all right, man, I've seen this dude through, t through 10 innings. I think he's given up, like, three hits and, like, no but, run. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer him a scholarship. Yeah, that, that proved to be a pretty smart move, uh, yeah. you know, based right. on ten innings, 10 innings. 10 innings, like, three hits, no runs. I'm going I'm to go ahead and pull yeah. the trip. Well, what else do you need, right? I mean, yeah. you know, and then, then you go to ECU and, and yeah. you know, you, it was funny, you know, listening to your description. Oh, yeah, I went to ECU for four years. Dude, yeah. career – wins leader with 38, uh, career innings pitch leader, 411 innings, game started 61, and strikeouts 334. I guess that was a pretty good uh, pretty good move by Coach Godwin at that point. It's so funny. He always tells the story. So the game I pitched at Wake Forest, the last one before he offered me a scholarship, he said him and the pitching coach, Bill Jarman, at the time they came to the game, he said, Bill, leave the radar gun in the car, like, Oh, this guy, he, he don't have to be low. Just leave it in the car. We're going to go just go evaluate him. And glad they did leave the radar gun because I'd, I'd probably be somewhere else. So <laughs> it worked out. You know what? You're, and you're a great poster child for that because you've had such a great career. And you're not a guy that lights up the radar gun. You never have been. You're just a really, really right. smart pitcher. You, you pitch within yourself. You can pitch off your fastball, off your off, your off speed. I mean, you, you, you've had a phenomenal career doing that. Where did you learn that? I mean, how? Where did that come from? I think I think that was instilled from my parents. I mean, you yes. gonna get me tonight? Are you gonna get me this AB? Hey, it's, I'm coming right back at you. And just, I mean, that that stubbornness. That's all. Also, a little bit of my downfall because mm -hmm. I'm too stubborn at times. I'm coming right at you. I don't, you know what I got? And I mean, I'm gonna take the percentages in baseball. Like you know, you're gonna fail seven out of ten times and. You know, you're still considered one of the elite players in the game. So play those. Like, hey, you give me this AB, I'm gonna come right back at you. I'll say it's a fluke, whatever. But in reality, I mean, stubborn. But um, you know, thanks to my parents and just really beating that in me, I guess. You know, I, I like on on you know, especially describing you. I think that's just more persistence than anything. You know, you, yeah. you got it. You're the only guy standing up there on the rubber. You know, nobody's. You know, can't look in the dugout. You, you know, you got guys behind you, but ultimately you're the one who controls that. And, you know, the, the beautiful thing of your, your college career is, is showing that and, and constantly wanting the ball. I mean, again, it's not just the wins. I mean, it's in every aspect of pitching. You just, you know, you had a great, great run there. What? Tell me about some good stories, some good memories there you have with Coach Godwin. Is there anything that stands out that, uh, that you might be able to share with everybody? So I, I, this is my very first college career start. Um, we're playing South Carolina. We get rained out Friday night, so we have a doubleheader Saturday. Our All-American T.J. Hose is throwing the first game Friday. I'm sitting there keeping the chart in the dugout watching them. And, I mean, it's just – it looks like a softball game going on. I mean, they are – I think he gave up 11 
maybe in like two winnings. Like, I mean, I'm sitting there as a freshman, like South Carolina, they were like top five in the nation. Too. Right, right. And like, oh man, like, here we go. What have I got myself into? So anyway, I come out start and I never forget my <laughs> my dad. He was so, he was way yelling at me in the stands. So I'm out there trying to warm up. We go, I go very first bat of the game, Reese Havens, deep fly ball to left. I mean, hit well. My good buddy lives in Wilmington now, Stephen Bats. Hits off his glove. He runs in a wall, lays there inside the park home run. I said, oh, man, my, I just has to spin it now. Next batter, Whit Merrifield, hang a curveball, home run. So two, very first two hitters I faced in college, back-to-back -back home runs. And then wow. was able to get through, muster through four innings, I mean, through probably 115 pitches, but, you know, just battled. That's good. That's good. Did you get the win? How'd that turn out? No, no decision. Four innings. Um, our, team, <laughs> our team did. Our team did win that game. Win that game, yeah. Yeah, because I think you were there, coach. I actually was yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I was in town. My dad lived there, and I, I right. was. I was there for the game that you were talking about, where they scored eleven off of in the first game. Yes, yes. Early. I mean, you I think in, man. You pitched well. Yes. Yeah. It was settled in on that. Was in that lineup too. Oh, they had a squad. Smoke, Havens, Darnell, Merrifield. They were so good. Uh, I don't yeah. think Bradley was there did yet. They the, did they win it that year? No. Um, no, no, the next year. Next next, yeah. next two years they went to Omaha, I believe. Yeah, and then you eliminated them from the regionals at your place, like maybe the next year or the year after? Yes, sophomore year, yes. Sophomore year, yeah. Yes, we That's walked right. them off to go to the Super Regionals to play That's North right. Carolina. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, that's some good, oh, yeah. good college baseball back in those days. Oh, man, that was, yeah. Kyle Roller, yeah, I remember him scoring. It's a slow motion, see him running around. You take away from that. Uh, what else we got? Um, There's got to be a funny story. Funny story, I mean, yeah, I, regarding baseball? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep this thing. Is, yeah, we're talking about baseball here? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. Sure <laughs> the story is probably relegated to just going out and shoving and, and on the field. Right. I tell, mean, me, I get that. tell me about a day. Tell me about a day where you just had really good stuff and nobody was going to touch you. I think I can't I went 10 innings one game. Um, so I, I'm not sure if it was Pepperdine. I want to say it might have been Pepperdine. We're playing Pepperdine. And, you know, I think in one of those games where just on, you're able to, you know, spot up, putting it here, you got a meeting out of your hand and um, – I think I went out in the ninth and I struck out two out of three or struck out the last two batters. And it was, uh, we we're losing two to nothing at the time. Um, we come in bottom nine and I think Ben Fultz hits a two run homer, freshman hits two run homer. And coach comes up to me and said, he still got it. I said, hell yeah, let's go. Got through the 10th. Um, we didn't score anyway. Couldn't go back out to 11th. That's, so went 10 and that, that was probably one of my highlights. That's a long, that's a long outing for sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. So, you made it to Pro Bowl, right? You make it through ECU. Tell me, tell me about how your pro career started. Tell me a little bit more about that with the with the Cardinals mm. and the Cardinals organization. So I believe it's I might I'll take the draft day. I'm, I was laying in bed. Um, you know, school was out. My roommate comes. He like knock on the door. He's like, "Hey, you just got drafted." I was like, "Oh, for real?" So I pulled it up, like typed it in, saw my name there, Cardinals. Right. Like, didn't know anything. I'm not sure if I got a call later that day, text whatever. Told me I was going to Batavia, New York. He's so excited. Go, pro ball. Here we go. We're going to Batavia, New York. I don't know where the hell that is. I mean, <laughs> so I get. I'll never forget. Where is this Batavia, one. New York? I think I, I think I had a nine o'clock flight out of Raleigh. So I were in Pinehurst at the time. So it's an hour and fifteen, hour and a half to the airport. Of course, we're late. I missed my flight. So I was supposed to get in at like nine o'clock or eleven o'clock, eleven thirty, I guess, to Batavia, New York. Ended up getting in at ten p.m. There. Luckily, there was nothing that day. Next day, we cranked it up, practiced a couple of days, and uh, it's the middle of nowhere. I don't know if y'all from ever been, but it's upstate New York, upstate. somewhere. Like Syracuse. I think an hour from Buffalo, maybe. Buffalo. I'm not sure exactly on the map, but I mean, it's up there. Not much. And so excited for pro ball, get there. It's an old rundown field. I mean, locker room's nasty. 17 people at a game. I mean, it was tough. 17? And 17 <laughs> wow. people at a game. I mean, it's, yeah. 
nothing what you expect about being drafted a pro ball. You know, it's, right. I was actually felt like took a step back from college, how good we had it. Anyway, I, I was coming out of the pen there first couple outings and then I got a couple starts and I made the all-star team there. It was in Lowell, Massachusetts. And my dad's coming to the game and I get, I find out after the all-star game, I'm going to Palm beach, Florida. Somebody got hurt down there. So I just packed a backpack with, because our team was coming to play there after the All-Star game, and they were going to bring my luggage. So I just took a backpack, a couple pairs of underwear, one change of clothes, because I was only going to be there two days. So my dad one night, flew to Palm Beach, Florida, was there a week and a half as a pin. My stuff gets mailed in that meantime to Florida. Once it gets there, or I had already left, I got sent to um, – Low way. I get sent to low way for that. I think at Quad Cities, Quad Cities, Iowa. Still don't have my luggage. Quad so Cities. I, I go to, what's that? Where's Quad City? Quad Cities, Iowa. Iowa. Down, Quad I, I believe Iowa. So yeah. you were in Florida yeah. for two weeks. That's it. That's it. I went to Hyde to fill in. Somebody got hurt down there. Then I go to Quad Cities, Iowa. They make the playoffs. So I'm without my luggage for like two and a half, three weeks. I mean, just roughing it. <laughs> anyway, so I sleep on a couch the rest of that year. We win the championship in low A, and next year I start in high A. And so that was a very eventful first year of pro ball. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. It's, you know, what? it's interesting, and I, I hope people are hearing this, is that, you know, one of the things that, that I admire most about you is everywhere you've been, you win. You know, that's one of the things that – we talk to our kids about all the time, you know, and, and, and Jeff, you know, pounds it into the organization is, you know, people love winners, right? You know, you, every step you go, you've got to win. And, and the wonderful thing is, is, is I hope, you know, the kids that are listening to this and the parents and, and everybody else, they understand that, you know, even in life, you've got to win, you know, there is no other option. You've got oh. to go out and be, be, you know, be able to compete. And that's what I love about you. Is, is that's always been your, your trademark is you go out and compete your butt off and you end up winning. For sure. I mean, just that's my, always been my philosophy. If I can hold these guys in the game, and it's very simple. We've got to score more runs than they can. And if I can hold them, hold our team in the game, the longer I can do that, the better chance we've got to win this game. And regardless, it's baseball. You're going to – messed up things are going to happen. You're going to give up your fair share of runs. You're going to give – that's going to happen a lot. And the easier you can just shake that off and move on, but it's a lot easier said than done. I mean, the more successful you'll be, right? Because you're gonna fail too much in this game. That's why. That's why it's so good because you fail so much, and it really tests who you are deep down. Yeah, absolutely. So you make it. Uh, you make it to high A. How how long were you in the minor league system before you made your uh, major league debut? So I guess it would have been a, that my first year I was drafted eleven. It's kind of partial season. And then 2012, I start in high A. I make, uh, I believe, five or six starts there. I'm, I'm right. not sure exactly. And then I got called up to double A, and I finished the year there. We won the championship in double A again that year. And then the next year I started in triple A, was there three, three, four weeks, and got called up. Wow. Yeah, and quite a major league debut. Uh, you remember that uh, pretty well. I mean, I know you were talking about rookie ball with 17 people in the stands. You know, yeah. fast forward, fast forward about a year and a half, maybe two years at the most, and and you know you're pitching on big, big field, uh, big league stadium. How was your, uh, what was your first inning like? Oh, I mean, definitely you go, you you've been to a major league stadium when you're a kid, but until you're out actually out there on the field, you don't realize how big it is and I mean, how small you feel down there. Um, so major league debut, my dad flies in and he snores. I'm like, Dad, let me go to sleep. Because like, it's, a, it's a day game the next day. I said, let me go to sleep. Like, I'm anxious. I need to sleep. Right. And, of course, he's over there sawing logs. So, I mean, I'm, I'm doing my best to get a couple hours of sleep. Anyway, I mean, I'm super excited going in. Go in and, um, you know, the locker room is what you get. So, you come from, you know, a little trailer into, into a, you know, mansion of a locker room and just right. so much space in there. And – just excited, nervous. You don't know what to expect. Do the BP. It's the same game. Everything's the same. I mean, everything, just the facilities. The exact same game. Do the exact same BP, same routine, same throwing thing. 
And game time comes, I mean, just waiting on that phone to ring in the bullpen. I've been, I've been a starter, like, my whole career, and that's when I, I finally went to the bullpen. And so, you know, I, I, I was nervous with that. I didn't know if I'd be able to go back to back days, whatever. And my debut ended up coming, like, four days so this is a crazy story. I was in the big leagues. The stars threw three straight complete games, three straight complete games. Oh, no, I said, happened. holy cow. No, I didn't realize that at the time. Right. Like, How good are these guys? And it's like, you know, the bullpen never pitches. This is awesome. <laughs> so anyway, I think we're, we end up going to Milwaukee fourth day. I get like the seventh, eighth inning and I face like Segura, Braun and Ramirez and I think like eight pitches, three ground balls, and yep. you know, got out of got that one under the belt. And then the next day, I think I came in and got the win on a double play through one pitch, got a double play, and got the win. So I was pitching back to back days is easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, they were going through a stint there for a while where Matheny was like, you were like a double play specialist, weren't you? Right. That's what I mean. I didn't realize the sinker was, you know, had the effect it had, but I was able to get ground balls and they bring me in with runners. Bases loaded, first and second, you know, just one out and try to get that double play ball out of the inning and had some success with that and, I mean, just ran with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember your debut because I, I remember I, I didn't coach you. I entered the organization a couple years after you had, you know, after you had graduated, but knew about you at ECU, you know, knew, knew the ties with the Canes and with Jeff. And, you know, it was a big deal to us. I mean, I know all everybody that Jeff could – could reach out to you know we we were there watching so uh, it was it was memorable to say the least and you know watching you up to that point and gosh you've done you know you I know the debut you're you're you know I'm sure the the nerves were there but how many times as a kid have you had you had gone through that before in your head you know how many times did you have visioned that before you uh, actually stepped up onto that rubber oh for sure I mean as a kid but and, you know, until you actually go through something and know what it's about, and when the door's open for the bullpen to run in, I mean, it's just, I mean, one foot in front of another. Just to you. Right. It's so, I'm more nervous, like, running in and throwing my warm-up pitches. But once, you know, I tow that rubber and the batter's in the box, it's, it's the exact same game you've played since you were five years old. And that's right. what both times do. That's why I see a lot of guys that go, get called up in major leagues and think, oh, well, I have to – you know, I got to be a little bit better than I was in AAA. When in reality, you got called up from AAA because you have what it takes as it is, and you don't need to change anything. You have it; it's in there. You could call a guy up from high A and put him in the big leagues. He got the right mindset. I mean, he can have success. There's right. just so many guys there, and it's just who, when that when that window opens, and you just got to run with it and make the best of it because I mean. If you can't get it done, there's a guy waiting right behind you and a guy after him, and the turnover, you go right to the back of the line. And right. that's the thing, just, just riding that wave. Yeah. So you guys are pretty successful. I mean, you, you come in, you, you, have a, you have a good year. Uh, tell us about uh, the next major accomplishment you had in the, in the big leagues, uh, getting to the World Series. How old was that like? Honestly, it was – I, awesome. I'm not trying to downplay this at all, but I had, you know, just a focus. I wanted to stay there one more game, one more game, because right. I, I didn't want to get sent down. That was my biggest thing. You, They say it's easy to make it to the big leagues. It's hard to stay. So I would just want one more game, try to have another good outing, another good outing. And I look up into the year, and it's like, hey, we're in the playoffs, and we're playing Dodger. I, I think it was Dodger. I can't really remember. It's such a blur, honestly. And then we go to the big – we're playing the Red Sox, and I just remember just walking out for BP, and you could barely get to the field um, – how much media was there right. and had a couple outings in the world series i mean it's just numbing numbing gave up a big home run there which i mean was very i mean humbling to me you know you play the game whole way whole life and you know you don't expect those failures and stuff but it happens and because it happens right. and then you no know, i come back from that and keep moving on and um luckily we lost we lost in six but you know, right there had a chance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, that was a great year for you guys. You had a really good year, you know, shoring up the bullpen and, and, and contributing a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, tell us tell us a little bit more. Fill us in uh, what's happened since then and, and what, you're, what you're up to now. So, I guess fast forward to 2016, I started having arm trouble and – 
ended up having surgery August of 16. I had, it's called primary repair. It's kind of a little bit newer, I guess, when instead of taking a ligament out of your wrist, they kind of create an artificial brace with like a scaffolding anthrax tape in your elbow. And Knucklewood didn't have any problems from that, able to come back 17. Um, I missed probably a couple weeks of the season, went to Omaha. Can I ask you a question to, about that surgery? Yeah. I know we talked about it a little bit, um, but if you had to do it over again, would you have just done Tommy John or would you just, you would have gone that route? Did you, did, did your doctor tell you to do that because it would be quicker recovery? Yeah. I mean, he, he laid it out. He said, Hey, you got, you can do Tommy John, which more than likely I would have missed the 17 season. Um, and I, you know, I was like 28, didn't throw hard. I say, you know, you got to, you got to stay in the game. And that was the thing. I wanted to just get back as quick as I could. Right. And, I, and I had zero the arm problems. Worked. The surgery worked 100%. 100% worked. Never had an arm issue after I had that surgery. There you go. Um, I mean, I swear, yes. I, no, I that's, never threw good, hard. That's, good, that's good for us to know. Right. Because, you know, I mean, you know as well as I do, I mean, arm problems is a thing, man. I mean, it's an all oh, yeah we're in round and in contact with. I think you're one of the first people that did that surgery. Right. I think a couple more guys have had it now, but it, I think a lot of high school guys had done it. And, you know, Dr. Paletta, who's the team doctor now for the Cardinals, he wasn't in the time when he did my surgery, but, you know, he swore about it. And, I mean, he, he laid it out. He said, hey, you can do the Tommy John or I got this new thing, primary repair. And, you know, the results I've had with the guys are just as good. And, but the recovery time is, you know, six to eight months instead of, you know, 12, 14, 16, depending on how much you want to ramp it up. Right. Well, but, you know, I mean, coming from you, somebody who actually lived it and did it, you know, that's good to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, mean, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just – Yeah, sorry. You, no, no. You mentioned that surgery, and I just – my mind went straight there. Right. I guess um, the ligament, if it tore at one end, they're capable of doing the surgery, but if it's tore right in the middle, you have to do Tommy John. So gotcha. I guess mine was coming off the bone at one end, and, you know, that's why it was an option for me to do that. And so I had that in August. I went – I reported to camp, and, you know, I probably could have broke with the team, but it took a little sl – I stayed and extended for two, three weeks and then reported to AAA. And I had four outings there and then went to Kansas City, like nine appearances, and – which I was good. I think a little bit of it was coming off the surgery, just, you know, a little hesitant after you have surgery. Right. It's like, uh, do, do I actually, does this work or, you know, you still know how to pitch. That little bit of doubt. Pitch. I mean, that little bit of doubt's enough to, to, oh, to yeah. affect it, especially at that level. Absolutely. Right. I mean, that's, a, well, yeah, it's a cancer. That, anything in the middle, if you're thinking about anything we're on that rubber other than executing that pitch, you, you're you already, you know, behind the eight ball. Right. So you know, I mean, metal, metal, metal holdups in baseball just don't work. No, I mean no. not, not as a pitcher, not as a position player, not as a hitter. Like you can't yeah. have doubt. And, and like you said, I think you said this a minute ago. Like easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. when we, if we all care about having success, and then all of a sudden you're not having it or whatever, or something's not going your way, and then. You get pissed off. Well, that's just kind of a sign of caring. But at the same time, it's like figuring out how to channel that is something that oh. a, lot of, a lot of people just can't do. I mean, I'm not good at it. Definitely. I mean, it, any sport, golf, you, you yeah. get to think a little bit, you're you're done. I mean, any baseball, but it's the right. biggest. But the game is based on failure, and you are going to fail so much. And But you, it's hard to process that for, you know, being a intelligent person. You're like, well, damn, I'm going to fail. I don't want to do this. And it's just right. learning and evolving off that and figuring out a way to not, not fail less, but, you know, okay, we'll take some positives out of that. What what did I do good? Yeah, I failed, yeah. but the results aren't there. But, no, I, put, I had a great A-B up there. You know, I worked the count. I squared a ball up, and that's going to happen. You're going to execute pitches from the mound a lot. You're going to hit your spot, and the, the, it's going to get ripped. Sometimes home runs, and you're like, hey, tip your hat. Like, you got me this time. Like, I, I'm going to throw that nine more times, and you ain't going to touch it. Right. So, and so this is the – go ahead. Sorry about that, Seth. No, 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 no. Go ahead. So, so at this point, this is really the first 
I mean, I guess documented really case of you having to struggle. I mean, I know there's struggles inside of successes. I get that. But that, that sure. was a point where the first time you struggled, how did you get past that? How did you, you know, how did you say, all right, hey, I got to pick myself up and, and keep moving? Okay, so I went up to Kansas City, had nine outings. I mean, numbers aren't terrible. I think I had a three, seven, um, nine appearances. Just getting hit. I mean, it's kind of one of those, like, it was a matter of time for I was going to get exposed. Go get sent down to Omaha, and, I mean, it is just uh, – they're, they're fighting over the bat rack they hit off me. And I, I'm giving up, <laughs> up three to six runs. Every I'm, – I'm going one, two innings max. And, I mean, it's just, like – like what's going on here and then that's I mean that's the worst part of all because you go into just a deep hole start searching okay breaking everything down overthinking it and that's the biggest issue for in my opinion is overthinking it as simple as you can keep things it works the best because you got six different guys telling you what what you're doing wrong you're looking at video well what did I do in 13 when I was good okay analyzing that well they're telling me this and then you are just you know, suck down a black hole and you go back out there and you don't know. I mean, you come and set like, okay, am I, am I set in the right spot? And where's my foot position, my shoulder open? And that, that you're defeated right there. And when you're going, everybody knows when you're going good, it's not, it's like, okay, fastball, boom, execute. And when you have those thoughts racing through your mind, you're not in a good place. So I, I went through that for about a month and a half and finished out the season pretty on a good, good note end of 18 season on a good note, you know, got it back on track, decided get back to the mindset of, you know, what got you there in the first place. Just boom, execute, see it, don't overthink it. And signed back in 19 with them. I think I had three or four outings and went on the Phantom. And then so that's kind of writing on the wall there. And um, I made a spot start and then got released and couldn't get picked back up. And I believe mean, that was, that's night, no, 18, into 18. So I was jobless. And then 19, wanted to give it one last run. So I started an independent ball in High Point, North Carolina, new team they built, the Rockers. I made one start there and then got picked up by Nashville Sounds and finished the season there. You made the All Star team there, didn't you? Yeah. No, I did. Made the All Star yeah. team last year. Uh, go figure, right? <laughs> <laughs> Triple A All Star team, ah, no big deal. <laughs> you always leave. You 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 always leave uh, little things out. No one would ever know. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. So so you mentioned another sport that I've heard you're pretty darn good at is uh, a little bit of golf. I love. I mean, that is my true hobby. Growing up in Pinehurst, North Carolina, that's about all there is to do. Yeah. So you got to love it. And I mainly grew up working on the golf courses and enjoyed that. Me and my buddies, we'd all work at different courses so we could go out and play the courses there uh, for cheaper. And so anyway, if I could, yes, play one thing, it would be golf. But I, I got a chance to play. I'm not sure I told Coach this. Um, play, got to play with Ricky Fowler, and I believe this was 2016. Oh, wow. Um, one of my buddies went to Oklahoma State with him. He's like, we'll take you out one day. And – you know, I, th I thought I could play a little bit of golf. And, I mean, I wouldn't have – I felt like an ant leaving it's that. Different. It's totally it's different. different. It's totally different. Yeah, I couldn't hold it. I got a jock strap. I think he'd be like 16 shots. No, it was just – he shot like 62, shot 70. I was like – I had a couple birdies. I was like feeling good. And, yeah. I mean, it's just another, another level. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So, Why all right. So, play like the best that – you know, when you go out and play golf with just your friends or a group of guys, usually you're one of the better ones. I mean, right, right. Yeah. I've met a good group here in Wilmington, uh, some caddies of a Eagle Point nice course here in town. And everybody, I mean, high somebody's going to shoot 75. And so it's, it's some fun golf to play. That's competitive, yeah. Yeah, yeah but absolutely. Everything's shut down. That's all there is. Luckily, they kept the, kept the right. golf open. So. Are you playing golf now? Yes, oh, I played yesterday. Um, so played tomorrow. The courses aren't shut down down there. No, you just got to walk it, and uh, okay. they space the tee times out like every sixteen minutes. So hopefully you don't see anybody. But right. All right. So knowing all this, so where you are now, if you could go back and talk to yourself in high school, what would you tell yourself? Mm, I would just probably just stay with it. I mean, I, I believe that you know I, this the little bit of naiveness. 
I didn't know. And it's just, the more I learned, the more I, you know, kind of learned the business of it. That was the right. toughest part for me. Once I saw like how things work, cause you play the game your whole life for love of the game and just wanted to compete, just give me the ball. Let me go out there. But then a little more comes with it. And that's like anything in life. I mean, it's not, it's not that simple. There's more, well, what's going on here? You pay here, time, service. Like there's a lot of extracurricular things that come along with it, but just, you know, keep your head down. When you get the ball, make the best out of that opportunity. And once you leave the ball, once you drop the ball, you're off the field, forget about it because you can't change anything what happened that day. You can't go back on that outing and not give up that three-run jack that costs the game. So prepare yourself the best you can for the next outing. And, you know, so be it. Leave – I mean, I always say leave it on the field, which is super cliche, but, I mean, it's true. Do what you do what you can. Perfect your skill. Like I'm, I can't be a Clayton Kershaw. I can't be. I can be similar to Greg Maddox. I can't be. You know, I'm trying. Craig Kimbrell. You know, I I can't. You got to figure out what you do good and perfect that. Just keep polishing it. Keep polishing it. Right. That makes and sense. Yeah. Yeah. That. I mean, and that's great advice. I mean, you 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 you've hit the nail on the head. Is that you've got to keep getting better you know guys that um you know they're fortunate to have you know be, have a commitment to a to a school at an early age you know we tell them all the time hey that's great but you've got a ton of guys you've got to compete against you know the guys that are uncommitted maybe they don't have a scholarship yet you know you've got to keep polishing yourself up to make yourself attractive to somebody and that just means getting bigger faster stronger better you know so that you can compete and you can prove to somebody that you can compete mm -hmm. and, and you're a great example of, you know, keeping working at your craft and, you know, focus on winning and getting better and, and, and executing when you have an opportunity. So, so tell me, what's next for you? What, what, are, you, uh, what are you looking to do? What are you, what's hmm. the next move with you? I'm honestly not 100%. I've going, gone back and forth, um, you know, with the coaching, getting into that. And, or, I mean, I got my degree in accounting. I'm not sure that's probably not my path I need to take. So I think it's something I would like to be maybe um athletic director at college level and get my master's somehow and try go. to get into, get into that position or slowly climb the ladder somehow. So really, honestly, I don't know. I, I prepared myself to go to spring training this year. It didn't work out. And so now just I got a little extra time to think about it now and see what see what we can figure out. That's awesome. I, I, you know what? I, you're, you're very, you know, you, you have experience that other people don't have. You have, you know, you're obviously very intelligent, um, probably pretty good with your money considering the accounting background and things like that. So I'm sure anybody would be excited to have you as part of their organization. I'm, I'm, I know I'm speaking for Jeff, I appreciate it. but, but you're welcome to come coach with us anytime. <laughs> yeah. man. I, don't sure. profile, I don't know if we're high profile enough. I know, yeah. right? I know. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. Yeah. What do you think about it? You think about coaching in pro ball, maybe? No, I, I, I wouldn't do – college would be, I think, my dream to coach at. And then – because I, I don't like pro, – pro ball is really – I mean, no offense. It's, it's, not, it's not really coaching. It's, it's more there, like, kind of feeding them, helping them, fluffing the egos. I mean, just – trying to get them next step. I mean, you can tweak a little bit, but mainly those guys are, they already got it. They, I compare, I compare pro, well, you're, you, um, first of all, I never played pro ball. So, you know, how can I sit here and say, you know, what it is or what it isn't, but I have my opinions. Um, and, you know, our team now with the Canes, this national team that I get every year. So there's 25 guys sitting in a room and they're all going to Vanderbilt or South Carolina or LSU or Florida or wherever. And a lot of them are highly touted and are supposed to get drafted out of high school and never mm -hmm. step foot on a college campus. And how much coaching am I doing? Uh, not a lot. I mean, let's be honest. It's it's a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out who fits where. You know, what who should hit lead off, who should hit in the three hole, you know, who's right. our, who do we want to give the ball to to set up games, you know, who who do we who do we want to have the ball at the end of the game? Things like that. It's not it's not coaching per se, like college coaching. Those guys, 
I mean, they are with those their guys like every single day. You got these long practices, and and then you've got these kids that you have for four years. Um, these the freshmen, right? That didn't play oh, yeah. that much. And he worked yeah. his tail off and gained fifteen pounds in the weight room, and then all of a sudden, his junior year, he's a contributor. And and high school baseball is 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 similar in a, in a sense too. Like that's really mm-hmm. why I jumped into that is because. The, the coaching piece, but um, I can see you being somebody that would be an outstanding college coach for sure. You know, be able to pass your knowledge on to somebody, especially over like a four-year commitment. Right, right. That's why I like more, just a little bit more family and, and you know, development. I mean, we could go back and forth of development, really. Those guys got it too. You got to polish them, but it's – Probably college. Yeah, but, but you do. You have a lot more hands-on, really, in college. You, right, you know, right. You can change things a lot more mm-hmm. than, than than they typically True. do in pro ball. I mean, you know, guys True. got an arm slot in pro ball. It typically stays there, and they work with this stuff. But, you know, college, you can you can see things, and, and you can say, all right, well, you know, True. we're going to move you from yeah. here to down here a little bit and get a little bit more of that sink, you know, that, that you were famous for. Um, okay. But, yeah, I, I can totally see you in a college dugout as well. I, I, hopefully, maybe at some point. But adding on that, I mean, like this year in Nashville, the like the pitching coaches really didn't have a say. It's coming from the analytics guys up top. You know, who's getting the call? Who's what kind of you know numbers they like the best and stuff. And you know, but I knew like I'm not sexy on paper. Like any numbers I got, I, I, it's not sexy. Like you know, oh, I don't have that column. Right. I mean, but you, you would think, but, you know, yeah, yeah. But I mean, been the 95 with, you know, the, the high ride and spin rate and stuff and, you know, all those numbers a little oh, bit. I'm, makes me sick. There I, is I, a place for it. Great guy. You know, we, 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 we chase guys that can get people out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I feel it's a little certain time in the game. Something to it, you know. Like, Jeff Petty, you make your numbers. Your number, a numbers don't make a Jeff Petty, and that's why I feel like they've kind of gone the wrong way with it a little bit. Well, I mean, your umbrella is under the numbers, just details about you. But now I feel like you, they want to take some numbers, and okay, this is what kind of player this is going to be, and just a little bit backwards. But I mean, I, who knows? Who knows? Really, I hope, I hope it's a little funk and come around for guys like me that you know less sport because I play with a ton of guys that you know pitchability guys 86 90 like me and they you know just got as soon as they slipped up a couple times they got weeded out and so Mm -hmm. yeah very interesting very interesting um what kind of uh what kind of advice would you have for our Canes kids I mean we have you know we have youth teams I don't you know I'm not sure how how well versed you are in, in kind of our universe now but we have some youth teams we have some affiliates that are all over the country um, but really, youth team all the way up through high school. What what kind of advice? I mean, uh, you know, they're watching this, saying, "I want to be, you know, I want to be where Seth is." And, and what can you tell them? What can you give them? My big thing is just stay true to yourself. Like, do not see you're gonna play with a lot of other guys that you see are no, you're having they're having more success because they may throw different. And well, you know, I want to throw that slider. Oh, he's got a good slider. I, I want to throw that slider. I want to try to teach me how to throw it. Do what you do. Like you're on that team, the renowned Canes team for a reason. Like, you're obviously good enough. Perfect that skill. Like I said, that's my biggest thing. Just keep polishing yourself up. Do what you do best and don't try to stay within yourself is my biggest thing. And that's what, I mean, I feel like helped me my whole life because, no, hell yeah, I want to throw 95. Damn, that's, that's it. It would be fun. Just one day I wanted to do it, see what it felt like. But, you know, just, I mean, staying true, working the bottom of the zone. But now, I mean, but you, you know, there, there's a lot of guys that throw 95 that say, damn, I wish I threw in the, I wish I threw in the big leagues or man, I wish yeah, I threw in the yeah. World Series and I wish I had the career Seth Main has had because there's not, not a lot of guys that can say that. So, you know, I, I get what you're saying and I, I totally agree with it because I would love to throw, have thrown 95. I was an infielder, mm-hmm. couldn't, couldn't throw like that and definitely didn't have anywhere near the career like you would have, like you've had. But, um, you know what, that's great advice to our guys. I really, um, uh, you know, hopefully they, they'll take it to heart. Um, it's neat for me to see the relationship you guys have because, you know, you played with Jeff, you know, played for Jeff, what, back in 2005, 2006, somewhere around there, 14, 15 years yes. ago. And, you're, you know, you're still referred to him as coach. And, 
you know, he, it's neat to see that relationship that came from a travel ball. Um, and, 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 you know, being able to watch you on TV and all that, you know, we're proud to have you um, have worn our uniform. You know, when it was the orange and green, not many people know about that. But uh, right. then when it was the orange and green, it wasn't the black and, and gold yeah. that we are now. But, Seth, man, it has been awesome having you today. Um, you're a wealth of knowledge. You know, anybody um, that's out there would love, you know, should love to have you as part of their program. Um, but there's nobody that's prouder of you than, than we are because, you know, we, we, we really appreciate how you've represented, you know, not only us as the, as the Canes, whether you know it or not, but uh, the way you represented your family, the way, way you represented the, uh, the Sand Hills area of North Carolina, man. You've been a real inspiration and really appreciate you coming on today. Um, oh, for sure. Huh? Thank you all for having me. And I mean, much more continued success as y'all, I love seeing y'all hoisting the trophy year in, year out. It's, y'all got it going on. So very proud to say I was a cane. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. man. Well, thanks a lot. Have a great day. And you know what? We'll, we'll be talking to you soon. We'll check in on you and see how that golf game's going because I'm sure Ricky probably yeah. went home and said, dude, there's this guy in North Carolina. Yeah. And Seth Maynard, is, man, right. he can really stripe it. Yeah. Really appreciate <laughs> right. it, guys. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you. Awesome. I'll talk to you all. See you, Coach. All right. See you. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully you got as much out of that as I did. Seth is a great guy. So big shout out to Seth for joining us. Really appreciate it. If you want to reach Seth, you can contact me directly and I'll get to that. But first, if you enjoyed this episode, like, comment, subscribe, review, and share. Give us a follow on social media at Canecast Show. You can reach me on all social media channels at Rob Younce. Or email me directly at robyounce at gmail.com. Welcome your feedback as look to improve this every single show. Stay safe, wash your hands, and for goodness sakes, don't miss a good fastball.